The word propagating means to follow through. So when we're talking about propagating uncertainty, we want to present any values that we calculate from experimental data with a total percentage uncertainty. And to be able to follow through my calculations and propagate the uncertainty, there are three basic rules that we need to follow. The first rule is that when adding or subtracting experimental measurements, we need to add together the absolute uncertainties. The second rule is that if I am multiplying or dividing experimental measurements, we must add together the percentage uncertainties. And the third and final rule, if we are calculating an average of repeated experimental measurements, we actually don't need to do anything with the uncertainty. More specifically, the absolute uncertainty of the average is identical to the average, excuse me, absolute uncertainties for the individual values. If at this stage you're not sure about the different types of uncertainties I've just mentioned, it's worth checking out the types of uncertainty video before you watch the rest of this. Let's have a look at some examples. So in this first example, we're going to try and calculate the total mass of three objects and then make sure that we propagate or follow through those calculations with my uncertainties as well. Here are the three objects. You'll notice, as with any experimental measurement, that each of these masses has the absolute uncertainty value following the measurement after the plus or minus sign. Let's start by doing the actual calculation itself. And as I'm finding the total mass of those three objects, I simply need to add together the masses of each one like this. Remember that if I'm adding numbers together, I need to look at the number of decimal places in these values and give my answer to an appropriate number of decimal places. In this case, it would be two. So there's my value for the total mass, 17.70 grams. Now we need to propagate the uncertainty in this calculation. The first thing to do here is check what kind of calculation I've just done, and you'll notice that I'm adding values together. And according to rule one that we saw at the beginning of this video, that means we must add the absolute uncertainties for each value in my calculation together. So here are my uns absolute uncertainties. And to add them together, I just need to do this. And just to be consistent, when I'm adding numbers together, I need to consider the decimal places in my answer. These three values all have two decimal places, so my answer should also have two decimal places. Therefore, the absolute uncertainty in my calculated value is plus or minus 0.03 grams. However, in most cases in a lab report, it's more useful to express the uncertainty as a percentage uncertainty, so I need to use the following formula to give me the percentage uncertainty. And because in this calculation we are doing multiplication and division, I need to give my answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. There is one significant figure in the top number and four significant figures in the bottom number. Therefore, I need to give my answer to just one significant figure. So finally, I can present the total mass of those objects as 17.70 plus or minus 0.2%. And this gives me a nice indication of the impact of uncertainty on my value. In this case, the percentage uncertainty looks very small. Let's now take a look at a second example. In this example, we need to find the density of an object. And we're given the mass in grams and the volume in centimetres cubed. So let's start by doing the actual calculation of density. Given that the units are grams per centimetre cubed, I simply need to take the mass in grams and divide by the volume in centimetres cubed, something like this. The answer on my calculator is 1.631, but because I am doing a multiplication or a division, in this case division, I need to consider the number of significant figures carefully in my answer. The top value in my calculation has four significant figures and the bottom value has only two. So my final answer must be given to two significant figures. 
Now that I've done my calculation, I need to consider how we would propagate uncertainty through that calculation. And first I need to note that in my calculation I was dividing values. And therefore, according to rule number two, we must add together the percentage uncertainties from each value. So in order to do this, I need to notice that the uncertainty in the data in my question are absolute uncertainties. So before adding them together, I need to convert each one into a percentage uncertainty. Let's do that first for the mass measurement. And again, because in this calculation I'm multiplying or dividing, I need to use the smallest number of significant figures I can see in that calculation, which would be just one significant figure. Just for clarity, let's write out this scientific notation in decimal form, something like this. I now need to convert the absolute uncertainty in the volume measurement into a percentage uncertainty as well. I can use the same formula. And again, I need to give my answer here to one significant figure. Now that I have the percentage uncertainty of each of my experimental values, I can add those together to find the total percentage uncertainty. And again, I need to be careful. In this case, my calculation is adding two values together. So I need to consider the decimal places in my answer. And the smallest number of decimal places in my calculation is actually zero decimal places. So I need to give my answer here to zero decimal places as well. And now I've propagated my uncertainty to give a total percentage uncertainty. And I can present this with my calculated density, something like this. Let's now have a quick check of rule number three to do with averages. Now, some textbooks have quite complicated ways of dealing with uncertainties with averages. We're going to take a simple approach, which is perfectly acceptable for the IB. So if we are doing a calculation to find the average of some repeated measurements, the absolute uncertainty of the average that we calculate, we can treat as exactly the same as the individual values. Let's see how that looks in an example. Here is a table containing five repeated measurements for the time of something to happen. And as with any good table, we can see that the uncertainty or the absolute uncertainty for those measurements is plus or minus one second. So if I'm asked to calculate the average of those five times, I can do my calculation as you would normally. In this calculation, my experimental values are being added together, so I need to make sure the number of decimal places in my answer is the same as the values, uh, in which case they all have zero decimal places. So my value for this average calculation should also have zero decimal places. Now, according to rule three that's written at the top of the page here, because I'm calculating an average, I can give the same absolute uncertainty to my average that each of those individual values has. So my average can be written as 13 seconds plus or minus one second. And finally, as we often need to do in lab reports, I could convert that absolute uncertainty into a percentage uncertainty using the following formula, giving me a percentage uncertainty of plus or minus 8%. And in this case, the fairly large percentage uncertainty might indicate that I should try to use some more precise measurement equipment if I were to repeat this experiment. Let's quickly summarize the three key rules required for propagating uncertainty. Firstly, when adding or subtracting experimental measurements, we need to add together the absolute uncertainties for those measurements. And once we've done that, we can then convert into a percentage uncertainty if we need to. If we are multiplying or dividing experimental measurements, then we need to add together the percentage uncertainties of those measurements. And finally, when calculating an average of repeated measurements, the absolute uncertainty of the average that we calculate is the same as those of the individual values. And again, if required, I can then convert that absolute uncertainty into a percentage uncertainty. 
Hopefully this video is of some help.